How would you like some peanut butter with that jelly sandwich? Mother. Hey, oh, it's the Chris Cord Show. Hey, oh. It's- this is Wes, and you're listening to the Chris Court Show. And this episode is brought to you by. All right, welcome to another episode of the Chris Court Show. My name is Chris. We have Wesley Cadis here. I'm sorry for everybody. Take off your thinking caps. That's right. And Matt is on the phone because he has AIDS, syphilis. What is it? I heard COVID Uh, for the third time. Third time COVID. I I have no idea. Never had COVID before, so I don't know what I got. Oh, yeah, you never had COVID. Nope. I forgot about Uh, that. I'm pretty sure it's just I had cold, though. Yeah. I mean, I could just do what your cousin did and say it's allergies. Yeah, you can. I heard COVID. <laughs> but do you got do you got a fever or anything? Uh, I've actually got a runny nose and a cough and sneezing and everything, so. Oh, my God. Blood, and, blood in the lungs. Blood in the lungs. Yeah, do you have blood in the lungs there? I can't see inside my lungs, so I don't know. Well, you could feel it, can you? I mean, maybe. But anyway, here he is, still, still here. Yep, just you know, phoning it in. Via phone. And, you know, Wesley Cadis is here. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry for what's about to happen to all of you people. This is I'm your. I'm sorry. I can't be there with you guys. Oh, it's okay. Uh, we, you know, we're just having these uh, pinballs that Wes brought. They're pretty pinballs. good. I, I, uh, yeah, they're, they're uh, by two brothers, right? Yeah, yep. Two uh, brothers. They're a brewery that can barely manage to not have expired beer. So, yeah. And they're actually pretty good. So I like them. I have a little story for you guys. And it has it's a dad story, actually. Oh. Yeah. So I, I was dropping, you know, my kids my kid goes to first grade. I'm not gonna say school or anything, but went to school and um Pinus Elementary. Pinus Elementary. That would be weird if he went to Pinus Elementary. <laughs> um but, you know, I was going into the, uh, you know, the parking lot. I dropped uh, my kid off, and then I was coming out of the parking lot. Well, this big-ass white dude, you know, with tattoos, is walking his two kids. And, you know, it's it's kind of on a hill, so my car was kind of rolling back. So I hit the accelerator a little bit just so I wouldn't back up into the guy in back of me. And the guy thought I was going to hit him and his kids. And he started yelling at me and staring me down. I was like, is this motherfucker really going to start shit at the school with his kids? And I'm pretty sure uh, I had Michelle on the phone. I'm pretty sure he was saying, um, what the fuck is your problem? And then screaming all these other things. And I told him I couldn't hear him because my my wife is yelling at me right now. <laughs> but he was like <laughs> eyeing me down. Like I, I I pulled off and then I started eyeing him down and I said something like, you know, the fuck are you looking at or something like that but so here's the problem anybody with kids with them in person mm-hmm. thinks that that's like a shield where you won't touch me my kids are right here and everything whereas chris you've told me before it's like you hate children oh i do you, you told me you, you hate chris, children chris would kick that guy's ass and then go get miles and tell miles to kick his ass too right uh, he would actually have miles like kick the kid's ass yeah so that'd be like a father son beat down on the other side there that's what i'm saying like i i think that uh well well here's the thing like i as i started thinking this i was on the phone with michelle and like, I was, while this was happening yes oh god and I was I was like, you know what? I think um you ever just have thoughts that probably shouldn't be said out loud? So you were thinking about the guys like rib cage wrapped around the grill of your car there. No, I think it was worse and I, I don't know if I wanna say it. <laughs> I don't know if I, I I told Michelle about it. But um, I don't think I want to actually say it. So you were thinking about the guy's children's rib cages wrapped no, around. No, it had nothing. Well, it had something to do with his kids, but nothing about hurting them. Were the kids blonde? 
I uh, uh, maybe that makes a difference right there. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, if blonde they kids. Yeah, I'm. It's you got too... something against blonde kids, Wes. <laughs> Have you ever seen children of the corn? like fuck these blonde kids? Have you ever seen children of the corn? I'm sorry, like you you can't take an adult man with blonde hair seriously. Oh yeah, it's, it's against the rules. Like you, yeah. Now if you're at, like, if you're over like thirty with blonde hair, who has blonde hair that we know? Exactly, because they all work at the car wash right now. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think we actually know anyone. Uh, Tim. Well, Tim is beaten down by life. <laughs> Tim actually uh, made a song list for us, and I want to say thank you, Tim. Tim, you the best. You the best um, backyard sports partner ever. Yeah. He's oh, doing, yeah. He's doing all the work I should be doing. Right. You're right. going to have <laughs> yeah. to fire it. Uh, Matt, I think I hear, like, audio. Are you on your speakerphone? No, I'm on the headphones. You're on headphones? Yeah. I can hear like audio or something. It's Pornhub. Do you hear that? Matt's on Pornhub. Nothing should be playing. I hear like a TV in the background. No, I think that's us, I, but it's like looping back. I have the TV paused. Are we delayed? So we can I, add this, I wonder right? if. Is this three? Let me try this. This can be edited, right? Like, I'm, Is that. Yeah, it can be, but. He's not going to, though. I'm not going to edit it. Oh, that's, Jesus that's too Christ. Much. That's way too much. Is that? Can you hear me uh, better, Matt? I can still hear you guys. Sorry, this is a work in process, uh, progress here. I don't know. How many listeners do you have right this now? Is, this, this is our uh, first time doing well, calls. Currently, we have zero because this is pre-recorded and it won't be posted until later tonight. Hey, Matt, shut the fuck up. Don't be answering Ah, the That's true. Uh, but if you do want to, uh, check out all of our other shows. We have lots of interviews coming out. Um, I'm excited about, I'm not going to say, you know, I'm not going to spoil the surprises, but they have been on our, um, podcast. We got, uh, bands reaching out to us and, um, you know, from, uh, different countries. And, uh, I got, um, I got a podcast or an interview that uh, it might actually stop in the studio here. I heard it might be Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Mark Wahlberg, eh? Yeah, but with the Funky Bunch, though. All of them. All 18 of the Funky Bunch. I think one bunch. of them are dead. A couple of them are dead. I think most of them are dead by now. But yeah, it's Mark Wahlberg, though. So That's true. Uh, Matt, you want to go ahead and uh, bring us out to this song here? Oh, are you ready for the band now? Yeah. I yeah, am. okay. So I uh, found these guys on uh, Amazing and... Thought it was kind of neat. I went and listened to a few more of their songs, and I picked one. It was not the one I heard on Amazing. But the name of the band is Bugman, and the song is Avoiding Trouble. Oh, here on the Chris Court Show.
have an underground business that you would like to promote. Send us information on the business and we will play it here. It will give yourself good promotion. Just send all the information to Chris Court Show at gmail.com. All right, that was Bugman with Avoiding Trouble. What'd you guys think? I really liked it. We were we were dancing over here. I honestly was, and I never danced. But my first thought was like, for some reason in my head, I thought David Bowie has a little bit of a David Bowie feel to it. Yeah, I can see that. Where uh, where are they from again, Matt? Did you say? So they are they are a uh, I think they call themselves a post punk duo from Leeds. There's two guys. That's it. Two guys. That's it. Wow. I like it. Yeah, and uh, when I when I heard the first song that I found on Amazing, I was like, it's, it's catchy, it's neat, it's something different. I started listening to some more of their tracks, which they don't have a ton. But uh, I found this one, and I was like, this one's kind of cool. It's got like a little bit of like a, almost like a little hip vibe to it. It's just different. Not, something you don't really hear today being made, you know, in today's world. Yeah. One, one thing Matt knows right now with the kids is hip. Matt knows what's hip. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm totally hip. Yeah, no, I I really liked it. Um, it did give me that kind of like uh, '80s style. Who did you say that was like Love Kill or something? Uh, love Joy. There's a band called Love Joy, and it was a very similar bass line. Um, they're a very fun British band. They're very current and everything. But also, I mean, like the bass line, kind of also the Cars for me. Yeah. Which I'm a huge, huge Cars fan, which has never been cool. But I mean, it worked for me. Yeah. Well, I like that. Uh, I liked it very much. And are they on any uh, streaming platforms? Yeah, they actually have uh, two four-song EPs available and they're on all streaming platforms. And uh, from what I can tell, they've been around since about January of 2022. So they're a pretty new band still. All right. Well, there you go. Penis. We need to get well, to them an uh, interview. We could try to get them an interview. Yeah, that'd be fun. All right, so yeah, I'm still hearing that noise, but I don't know if that's recording or not. But we'll that's my heart, that's my heartbeat. It means I'm about to die. No, oh, no, come on, you're not. Oh, I'm. Oof, oh. All right, Tupac. We all know that he was killed. Well, 1996 is when he was killed. They finally found the killer, and that is Dwayne Keith D. Davis. He is the man who was arrested uh, tonight, actually. And uh, he is Tupac Shakur's killer. Now, is that related to the uh, house search that they did in Las Vegas that we brought up a couple uh, episodes I, ago? I believe so. See? I brought some important information then. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so here's my thought here. In Malaysian culture, and please crucify me if I'm wrong... They've got an island out in the middle of nowhere where if you can, like, swim through this, through the shark-infested wasteland and, like, all these rocks and everything and swim over there and touch this rock after risking your life literally about to die, you're forgiven for all crimes. There have been so many people who have blamed for this murder. How do we know this is the dude? Well, I think that uh, technology <laughs> has come up. And, I, 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 you know, they've been researching a lot. Um, maybe they don't know 100%. Chris, in that photo, he looks like Droopy Dog from the old Hanna-Barbera well, car. <laughs> hey, look at those jowls. Well, of well, course keep, he does. Keep in mind, this was 30-something years ago when Tupac was killed. 26 years ago. Yeah. So he's, he's 60 years old now. <laughs> of course he looks like that. But he's pissed off because he thought he was getting away with it. That's why he's got. He's pissed off because he knows JFK killed Tupac. Right. Yep. He survived. He survived COVID. I mean, look at all the things that he survived and still wasn't caught till now. He survived Trump. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. He God. survived Trump. <laughs> oh God. But he didn't survive Biden, did he? He survived the Pepsi and Coca Cola wars. Yeah. Yeah. So there it is. Tupac Shakur, may you rest in peace now that your killer is found. But he's not but, dead. He's he's living in Cuba. But with, I was going to say, do we have proof that he's actually dead? He's living in Cuba with I mean, Elvis and Frank Sinatra. 
Well, Elvis and Frank Sinatra are already dead. And Hitler. He's dead, too. He's in Argentina with a robot body. I mean, maybe. Maybe they weren't dead before, but they definitely died now. You know um, what I mean? I'm glad you ranked the Kool-Aid on that one because that's... Oof. <laughs> NFL fans are excited. Usher <coughs> is now playing the Super Bowl halftime show. So that's who you're going to see is Usher on your Super Bowl halftime show. Him and his Yay. sexy dancings. It's a 44-year-old uh, man now, and uh, here he is. How are you gonna? Are you excited for this? He's 44. I'm 39. He's always been like he's like 25, 30 years old in my head. Yeah. And seeing him at that age, looking that amazing makes me feel god awful about myself. Well, he has lots of money too. Keep that in mind. Yeah, if you had that much money, you could look amazing too. I mean, but he looks natural. Look at him. He's got the the cleaned up face, got the the That's studs. What money pays for. Right. Oh. Yeah, it makes you look natural if you do it right. Well, Matt, you've got money. Come on, give me some money. Where do I got money? Matt, you've got money. Yeah, I know. I pay for all the production on the Chris Court show. God damn it. Give me that. That's why this studio is so awesome. <laughs> that's, that's... Don't, you, don't you like that soundproof studio I built you guys? Jesus Christ. There's a giant like velvet painting of Elvis on the wall. This is awesome. There's a moth flying up here. <laughs> you, got, you got beehives up in there? That moth is in the payroll, though. <laughs> that's true. I had to kill a huge ass. I think it was last week. I had to kill a huge ass uh, wasp. Uh, for Matt because he was getting scared that it was going to sting him. Well, I'm allergic. Yeah. Well, stop being allergic. You can't stop being allergic. If to you be. were strong Actually, enough with the power of Christ, anything's possible. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels me to run away from bees. Matt, why do you <laughs> hate? Why do you hate Jesus? I don't. Why do you hate love? Hey, Jesus is a good guy. I work with him every day. Hey, Jesus, I make you tacos. Why is he Italian? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea why he's Italian tacos. What the fuck? It actually sounds good. Those sound awesome. <laughs> Carne asada with marinara. Oh. Ozzy Osbourne wants to record one more album and tour again next year. Can he do it? That's the final question. Probably not. <laughs> Wes, what do you think? I know you're a big Ozzy fan, and I know you're itching to say something about this. So, edit this out if you want. No, nothing but, gets um, edited. I'm part every year of a death pool through the store called Ghoulish Mortals. And basically, you pick 13 celebrities you think are going to die the next year. And the closer they are um, to, 99, like, to 99 years old. Oh, you were telling me that, yeah. Yes. And so, I think we actually talked about this on the show at one point, too. We did. And so Ozzy's been on my list for three years running. And I'm sorry, but he's worth a lot of points. And I'm kind of rooting for him right now to go ahead and just... Rooting for him in which way? <laughs> just, he's, just, he's rooting for him to go on tour and sh- fucking kick the bucket. <laughs> just, just, no, don't die. Just go to sleep and right. just never wake up. That's what, right. that's what your wife wants. That's what your kids want. Would you want would you want to hear one more album though before he does this? Jesus Christ, no. No. Okay. I mean, he's he would not have anything to offer there. <coughs> it's gonna be like other people in charge of everything, wheeling him in there, giving him a couple of blueberries and making him sing one song. He does not this is not for him. This is for everybody else who wants money. Yeah. I guess, but, uh, you know, he. this is what uh, Ozzy goes on to say. I guess he, oh, God, just had a surgery. That's probably what he sounds like when he says it. I am, God, Sharon. <laughs> this is what he said after the surgery was completed. I've done two albums fairly recently, but I want to do one more album and then go back on the road. Why is it a way to start sounding Italian when you talk about <laughs> I'm starting to work on it now, and we'll be recording in the early part of next year. I want to take my time with this one. Why would you take your time with this one? You're going to die. Here's my question. 
Chris, Matt, name Ozzy's last two albums. Go. The Ozmeth Cometh with me and you. So there's that. Matt, <laughs> anything? Share one! So oh, that Ozzy's, should be one. So Ozzy's last albums have meant nothing. Why is this one going to mean anything unless he dies? Because it's his last one. Do you know? Oh, so you know he's going to die. Here's well, he said it's his last one. He said he wants to record one more album. But if he ends up if he ends up living another couple of years, he might record another album. I doubt it. How many last tours has Kiss had? Well, Kiss is terrible. Oh my God, oh, they yeah. are terrible. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, you know what? I was always on the fence with them, and then I seen them live uh, with Rob Zombie. And they were god awful. So I, I actually just saw Rob Zombie two weeks ago. Oh yeah, you you were. Uh, I, yeah. I, I I seen that you went. Me and Jamie, my wife, uh, we went there. It was um, ministry. Oh, it was filter opening. Um, we didn't. Oh nice. We didn't bother there. We we said you didn't. Up. You don't like filter, do you? I don't care. Yeah. Um, then we saw ministry. Um, I, I will we, say filter puts on a good live show. Just they they really do. Yeah. I'll um, I'll send you your uh, your ice cream cone in the mail. Uh, so <laughs> then there was a filter. Then there was Ministry, who were awesome. Yeah. Then Alice Cooper, who was amazing. Yeah. Um, then Rob Zombie. The thing was, like, each set was like forty five minutes. They played all the hits. There was no bullshit. They knew what you wanted to hear. See, that's good. I mean, like, it was like literally like everything was a hit. Like the the best two songs every album. I mean, that's what Kiss did too. They played all their hits. Yeah, but it's yeah, but kiss. they played it like, you know, shitty. I mean, like, <laughs> do you care about hearing Cold Gin? I mean, nobody. I don't even know what the hell that is. That, that's one of their biggest hits. Yeah, Cold exactly. Gin. Yeah. Oh, I thought I, mean, I want to rock and roll all night is their well, biggest. Well, I said one of their biggest hits. Oh, but, but yeah. Cold Gin is another one. Yeah. Okay. I mean, exactly. See, the mistake the mistake you made, Chris, is that Wes knows more of their hits than you do. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course he does. I mean, I don't, I don't, I've never claimed to be a fan of Kiss. Let me get my uh, Kiss Army card out here. And, uh... <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, I, you know, hey, if he wants to do it, let him do it. You know, David Bowie's, do you know David Bowie's last album? Look, I know it exists. I mean, it's, it's very good, actually. If you haven't listened to it, with listen. a Lazarus on there? Uh, yes, I believe so. I want to say it is. It was a star. I, th- I forget what it was the album was yeah, called so but. i mean oh, for me it was like he knew he was going to die yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, nobody else knew it like as far as the, the the public knew right and like it was like a good farewell right because most people would be like i'm dying wife kids he was like one last thing for all these awesome fans yeah and that was it's a, a huge, very good album huge respect point right there yeah. it's like he gave a good um, and honestly like le- it was a great music video too Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was creepy. Oh, yeah. The eye thing. And- yeah. But, yeah, it was very good. That whole album was great. Uh, So, Chicago. Oh, no. You okay there? Yeah. No, I'm good. Matt's going to give I us hope- COVID over the phone. <laughs> Why does my throat hurt right now? Right. What That's the just fuck is dick is in it? What the fuck is going on? Well, it, it must have been all that. You, you were hanging out with uh, uh, Stupid last week, though. So All pro oh, yeah, here, yeah. everybody. All professionals here. Oh, how was the concert? It was all right. <laughs> that's where you got COVID. Oh, that's what I was going to talk to you about on the show. Yeah. Um. So I went to see uh, AWOL Nation and 311 play, which when I was told about the tickets, I was like, I was just told 311. I was like, meh, you know, whatever. That's a weird fucking lineup right there. Well, actually, it kind of made sense. It really kind of did. How was but, how was uh, AWOL Nation? Yeah, I, I took the tickets. They were free Uh-oh. tickets. Because I want people to see. Uh-oh. Hey, guys. What new albums are coming out these days? Oh, it's releases time. These days. New album. New album. New album. New album. New album. New album. All right, so you ready, Wes? I'm September re- 29th. 
one week after my wife's birth. That's all that means to me. Okay. These bands are out now. Go and check them out or support your local record store. We got Andrew Cushing waiting for the rain. Go ahead, Wes. Animal Collective. Isn't it now? Matt? I can't see it. By who? This is going awesome. <laughs> Arm and Hammer. We buy diabetic test strips. Yeah, we do. Blackstone Cherry screaming at the sky. Blonde Redhead. Sit down for dinner. Cherry Glazer with two R's. I don't want you anymore. Code Orange. The above. I actually love Code Orange. That's a cool oh, thing. Oh, okay. For me. Yeah. Uh, Del Water Gap. I missed you already, and I haven't left yet. Ed Sheeran. Autumn Variations. Skip that one. Georgia Smith. Falling or Flying. La Force. Exoskeleton. LP. Love Lines. Molly Birch. Daydreamer. Why'd you say this one for me? Onio ticks point never. I think again. it's all it is is one o tricks. Thank you, Jesus. One o tricks. <laughs> I don't know where you got the <laughs> Onio tricks. <laughs> My inner Russian came out there again. One o tricks. <laughs> one o tricks. Onio. <laughs> Slow pulp yard. And Wilco. Wow, I thought they were done with cousin. All right, go check those out. They are out now. Go support your local record store. How was AWOL Nation? So AWOL Nation was all right. I don't think they're a very good live band. And oh, or the guy blew his voice out before he came to the show here. Really? His voice was cracking a lot. He wasn't screaming like he does on the songs that you normally would with like the, you know, having your voices and stuff like that. Yeah. He was like, he was like kind of like most of the songs. He was just kind of like almost seemed like he was just not really trying. That's what it seemed like. And like, he was trying to get like energy out of the crowd, but it, he wasn't really doing it. But I think it was more of a 311 crowd too. Yeah. Well, here's where I come in there. Cause like a wall nation. I know them for the song sale. Sale. That's the only yeah. song I know them for. Oh, they have so much other good they have, I, They so have a lot of good songs. They I've, really do. I, I've heard the rest, but the general public, we've all heard Sale. Yeah. I've heard like many of their songs. But, Come like, Sail Away. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it's like that's what they're there for. That's the closing song and everything. So if your voice is done by that, the people are like they're buying beer, you know, the casual fans, it's they're going to like leave with a bad impression yeah that's why every show is your is like your first or your last or your last there you go so it was did you guys wasn't as, wasn't as good as i was hoping it would be oh, i will give show. i will give credit to 311 they still put on a very strong show but i know that your cousin in arizona hates the guy's voice yeah. and i know exactly which guy he's talking about now <laughs> <laughs> oh really <laughs> it's it's this little ball guy who plays the turntables and then he'll come out on the stage and start like jumping around dancing and singing and he's got like this really annoying fucking voice especially live it is so bad <laughs> well all right then wait so, so he... brett you are not wrong <laughs> so he just plays the turntables and he's he does the rapping parts oh boy oh yeah I mean, yeah. even like, so the Muddy Bay Boss Tones, um, back in the day, the ska band, um, they had nine members. One of them was a professional dancer. He was their former manager, and he just, like, you know, he got, like, bought out, basically, but they didn't want to see him go. So every time you see a Boss Tones show, there's one guy on stage just dancing. That's his job. Wow. Huh. And so, like, it's almost like that, where it's like, they don't want to let him go. But well, th this guy he he's like does rap really. on a lot of songs. He's part of the actual band. Yeah. Matt, I'm glad to hear you support his rap career. Oh, no, I'm not doing that. Matt, I'm glad to hear I was, that. I was, there to see, I was there to see AWOL Nation was disappointed. No, Matt, I'm... Was everyone saying, Tree 11, Tree 11? No. Mm. <laughs> Chicago's Guinness Brewery is... Open. Yep, just down the street from my office. Oh wow! And it's uh, the uh, only the second U.S. location for the 
famed Irish brewery. Now, I know when I pulled this up, Wes kind of said, ah, oh, fuck. Do you not like Guinness, or is this... I have no problem with Guinness. I can beer nerd for hours here. But basically, Lagunitas, when they first opened in Chicago, they were a wonderland. It was amazing. You hey, went, yeah, it was like Willy Wonka's. You went there, and if you like went on the free tour, you walked out drunk. You might have walked out high, because everybody working there was high. They all brought their dogs to work. About seven, eight years ago, they got bought up by Heineken. And I know people who work there, they're like, we don't get high at work. We can't bring our dogs to work. And when you go on the tour, now it's like you get two small sample cups. So once... So it's like, it's like the Miller tour. Yeah. Right. And so in this case, it's like the Guinness thing seems like a fun idea. And they're not buying anybody about anybody out. But at the same time, it feels like it's going to be very corporate because Guinness... The longer a company's been around, the more money's involved, and the the messy. Well, from from what I understand, I guess the Guinness Brewery is like a really small little microbrewery for Guinness in the city. It's more of a bar and restaurant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it's what it less says. of a, less of a brewery, more of a bar and restaurant. Well, Matt, did you think about the fact that your mom's more of a bar and a restaurant? <laughs> you want me to get her so we can tell her that? Oh, would, yeah, you can get her. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> Look at this. Prices on the lunch and dinner menu range from 7 to $24 for small plates. Small plates. And small 16 plates. to $36 for large plates. So, Chris, yep. for you, what's a small plate? For me? Yeah. I think of it as like a, a, a Panda Express. So, like, you know, a bowl kind of thing? Um, No, like the small plate. And then you got the big plate. Yeah, so you got like two little entrees. So you get two side. entrees and then a side of uh, uh, fries or um, chow mein. And so that costs what? Seven dollars? Uh, yeah, give or take. All right, so here it's 24. Yeah, but we're comparing this to Panda Express. But they're awesome, though. Don't I, know, I know they are. Oh, oh I, trust me, I know. I want to not like them, but I like them. I just had them yesterday. I'm, I'm sure going there is going to be expensive, and I, I've driven past it a couple nights already on the way home from work, and because I have to stop at the office, and I've almost run people over that are passing in front of the car because they're not paying attention to the cars driving by. And from what I could tell, it's a bunch of uppity douchebags going in there. Well, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't expect any less than that. Well, I mean, Wall yeah. Street Scrobots here is going to and from the office, so you know. They have Chicago brewed beers, including a Kinsey Pal Al, Mango Chili Al, <coughs> Pineapple Coconut Porter, and a West Coast IPA. Do they even serve Guinness? Yeah. That sounds, that sounds <laughs> generic as fuck. They'll have a 10-barrel brew house that will offer rotating experimental drafts brewed on site, exclusively available in the tap room, alongside signatures like Guinness Draft Stout. Like, don't get me wrong, I like Guinness, but this sounds like a big beer company trying to be a craft beer company. Trying as to well. get all the hipsters. This they're trying ha- to dip their they're trying to dip their toe into the craft brewery market. And it's to me it's a it's more of a ploy because you're getting really expensive food and expensive beers to people downtown in Chicago. Yeah, I'll say this, like I've done this for a long time. This happens all the time. Like a small brewery is like Honestly, it's not about the beer. It's about the location. They like swoop in there, and it's like before you know it, it's like, oh, yeah, here's Fred behind the counter. And it's like, this is terrible. We know nobody. It's awful. Um, I don't want to say the place is awful, but, like, the concept, it's it's rough. It's rough. Yeah. I think, I mean, it would be cool to at least go to, at least. I don't I'm think probably thing... gonna check it out because I think they I think they want to run like my boss wants to go over there for like an after work event one day. Yeah, I heard. I I mean I I just... we're gonna take you to your uh, take you on on your birthday. I heard this. I'm just saying this. I read there. If you go there, you're a communist. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Like, I, read, I read this. You're a communist. Well, I mean, I'm gonna there be... is a big there is a big Irish communist movement, right? Yeah. 
I'm going to be drinking a Guinness uh, as a communist. Speaking of Chicago, the signature room in Hancock closed down. It is closed after three decades, and it was a sudden close. It used to. Have you guys ever been there? Signature room? Never been to the signature room. I have no idea what the fuck you are talking about. <coughs> it's like it's like a lounge room um, that you go to. You spend money. You know, you you're on the 96th floor, and uh, you're just basically buying uh, overpriced steak and cocktails, and then you have a great view out there. Oh, it's the restaurant. Okay, because I know there's a bar too. It's called like the Sky Lounge or something. Yeah, no, this is the restaurant where you could take your honeys. Okay. So yeah, the bar was better. Matt has honey, so yeah, Matt has honeys. But anyway, right that now. is closed. Good day. Live Nation has announced that it would no longer take merchandise fees from artists playing at its 77 smaller cub venues. This means that artists will keep 100% of their merch profits. They are also offering a $1,500 gas and travel stipend to all headliners and support acts. On uh, top of their nightly performance compensation, this it's program probably the artist decided to say "fuck you," I ain't going anymore. <laughs> probably. So I had no idea this was happening. I mean, like the merch is like you're selling it out of your van, right? They have no hands in that. Like they make the shirts. Well, oh, a lot of, of these. But companies. if you want to set up a table inside their venue, you got to pay them. It's a table, though. Yeah, it it's doesn't one matter. table. And it's your table. You got to bring your own table in. That's fucking. <laughs> but that's you need to. Fu- you need to pay them their percentage. That's disgusting. That's some Dick Cheney shit right there. Oh Just my god. Just like that's the how- water comes out of your faucet, they oh. charge for that. That's how Live Nation slash Ticketmaster handles this shit. I mean, like, I understand like ticket sales. Like, Not be- anymore. Beer sales are venue. Ticket sales are like for like Live Nation. It's like a small band, like the opening band. Has to like pay money to them. That's awful. Yeah, but Wes, now they're giving a fifteen hundred dollar gas and travel. Oh, thank God. To oh. all their headliners and support acts. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that's and that only runs until the December. <laughs> so January first. It's not even a forever thing. <laughs> it's it's for the bands that are already on the schedule. Right. So they're kind of cool. Until New Year's. Right. Okay. <coughs> After the elections, for some reason. <laughs> Venues generally and, take... Come January 1st, we're taking all of your merchandise profits. <laughs> <laughs> Venues generally take 15 to 30% of performers' merchandise rates. Artists have long criticized merch, hu- merch cuts. For example, Jack Antonoff, whoever the fuck that who is... Who the fuck? Tweeted that merch cuts make it impossible for most working artists to make a living. So January 1st, you're telling me they're taking every healthy child out of the the, the room and they're going to go they're gonna sell t-shirts. Um, what? It's a question. Do you think those $45 I, and $50 t-shirts will be less expensive now? Uh, no. No. no, no. Do, you, do you buy merch shirts? Fuck. I do. I still do. I'm not I like do once in a while. Jesus Christ! I'm not Rockefeller here. I'm not buying like fifty dollars t-shirts. You got? Well, I I don't do it every time I see a concert. I do it if I really wanted the t-shirt for all That's like it. the bands that you really want to see. Yeah. So, so I, if Typo Negative was playing, you're telling me you wouldn't buy a shirt there? I would, but most of the time, besides Typo Negative, I buy it like off the street where some seven year old Korean kid made that. Right, and but like, all the words are yeah. like oh, misaligned yeah. and, and then, spelled wrong. Then, like, if, if like, they didn't sell like five shirts that night, they go to his house and kill his family. <laughs> That's when I buy a shirt. But besides that, though, it's like I mean, it, like, it well, besides it's type of night. I mean, come on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Besides that, though, I mean, like, unless like an Asian child is about to be murdered in front of me, no. Yeah. I mean, it's all spelled wrong and everything and, like, off-center and just, ugh, no. It totally is. And the shirts are itchy as shit. Very th- solid shirts. I think I might have got one's gotten a UTI from one of those shirts. Well, a lot of the shirts they saw at concerts now, too, are really cheap and thin. They fall apart, so they're not yeah. worth $45, 50 anymore. And they shrink fast. Fast. Yep. 
And you get UTIs. Well, is, it, UTIs. is it shirt shrinking fast, Chris, or is it you just drinking too much beer? No, it's my wife uh, shrinking the clothes. And so, Matt, Are you sure it's right? your, sure your not, not your wife's food inflating your belly? No, I assure you, it's it's the washing and uh, dryer. Well, either way, you're blaming Michelle. Right. He's got a Korean-made washer and dryer. It's awful. And it it is Samsung. Yeah. It's all it's all North Korea. They're communists. Yeah. The office is rebooting. Ugh. Update clarifies status and timeline of reported show. Now, why is this <coughs> being said? Because Office is one of my favorite shows. And uh, Greg Daniels is going to be a part of it. Uh, but I don't think any of the the casts are. It says here that... Uh, so it ended in uh, 2013. Um, let me see. That's going to be a flop. Oh, I think so, too. Well, well, the thing is, you can't... You can't have The Office nowadays. Because... How are you going to be able to play that? Like, with it being funny, you're going to get canceled. They're going to get canceled in an instant. Right. Also, I mean, you've got to wait. It's been too close. I mean, like, if you were to, like, do Happy Days now. And, like, that, like a reboot of Happy yeah, I mean, Days. That would work. But, like, this is, like, it's still funny now. Yeah. You reboot stuff because people can't relate to it anymore. Right. I mean, I, I watch The Office being, like, God, like, every few weeks i mean it's awesome yeah i mean i can relate to that so. i watch it every single night and i act like i've never seen it before so chris right now when he's saying that is cutting his wrists with a razor blade <laughs> i am i i don't want to, i don't want to reboot just leave it well i don't alone. think i don't think they should really reboot anything i really don't because none of the reboots has ever really been successful has there ever been like a reboot that you guys can think of that was like Holy shit, that was pretty good. No. I really can't. I worked Reboots at, are a terrible have, idea. Have you seen the new Evil Dead? Well, that wasn't a reboot. That was a sequel. Okay, yeah, a sequel. That was, what, great. It was you, great. Did you like it? It was great. So did I. Yeah. Um, that was like a sequel. That's why I mentioned that. Like, yeah. that was actually... Are you talking a, about the movie or are you talking about the TV series that was out for a little bit? The movie. The porno. The porno. Okay. The porn. I don't no, think I've seen the new one. The movie is more of like a, it was more scarier or, or, or creepier than it was funny. Here's my thing, though. The Office originally was a British show. Yeah. Came yep. to America. Yeah. Would that not be a reboot? Technically, um, oh, it's an American reboot. That is a no, reboot. No, yeah. yep, yep, yep. So yep. this is going to be a reboot of a reboot. A reboot of the Amer- of the British American Reboot of American. You're staring at me. <laughs> and uh, That's because he doesn't know what he just said. I was trying to figure out to see if anyone was like, oh, that's pretty intelligent. But nobody, I got it, but I was like, how do I respond? To nobody that? Yeah. nobody said it. Yeah, it's uh, um, Keith Richards wants you to stop yelling at him. Yeah, so this is what he says. Uh, rap music. I don't like to hear rap music. I don't like to hear people yelling at me. He's seventy nine year old old man and he's still trying to That just sounds like a seventy nine year old man. That's what that sounds like. <laughs> Meanwhile, he is yelling at the sky, pointing to it. Keith Richards looks like So, so he's yelling at Jesus? <laughs> yeah. Take me already. Keith Richards looks like cancer stopped off the side of the road and put on a man costume and decided to go outside and parade in the town. He's cancer in a man suit. That's all he is. Yeah, but he's still going and as much shit as he did. Like the, the, he's proving scientists wrong. No, he has everything. <laughs> He has everything. He's 79 no, years old. I, I believe he is proving scientists wrong. They haven't proven the fact that mummies do exist. Well, that's true. <laughs> Maybe he is dead already. So every disease is in his body right now. They're all fighting for the control. But they all want the credit for killing him. That's so they're all, all trying to, they're, yeah. They're all fighting for like that like extra credit oh, there. Deep. That's all that's keeping him alive. They want to be the, the ones. It's like it's like God, like like killing Jim Morrison. I mean, like 
They're mm. fighting for the fact they killed to him. To see which one will win. Yeah. It's like the Hungry Amps. Yeah. Inside of his body. Yeah. Matt, are you taking a poop? No, no, I uh, just took some Jim Beam. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, there you go. So, Jim Beam and COVID. All right, yeah. Well, uh, Jim Beam and cough syrup. Uh, COVID. Jim Beam kills COVID. That's why I'm drinking it. Um, but, you know, there, there's Keith Richards. Maybe he is dead already. You never know. Hi. <laughs> All right, what? <laughs> This is what's happening now. He's staring at me. I have no idea. I've got nothing. I've got nothing. The funniest part is in my head, I can picture Wes staring back at you saying hi. <laughs> you were not wrong. It's I mean, like I was there with you guys. He's editing right now. I, I was waiting for something, but... Uh, I, mean, you know. I mean, I... I no, that's fine. So, Here we go. All right, that's the end, <laughs> end of the show. <laughs> thank you, Wes, for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Being here while Matt is sick. Even though we do have Matt here. Matt's got COVID. Matt does have COVID, yeah. So if you want to um, send your you know, COVID cards and stuff, it's um, Matt, care of P.O. Box 3122 in uh, Worth, Illinois, 60479. Wow. I like it. And, um, I like it. So Matt is very humble, but he's, he's on his way out. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's terrible. Matt's dying. Matt, are you okay? Is, is this what my eulogy is going to be like, Matt, motherfucker? Matt, you're dying. Once again, thank you for listening to the Chris Court Show. Remember, if you have a band or business, or know someone that has a band or business, send all the info and MP3s to chriscourtshow at gmail.com. Chicken nuggets and cranberry sauce. The Chris Court Show.